Hi everybody, how you doing? A um, bit of a ranty video today, and I didn't intend to make a ranty video, but I've seen a few things that just wound me up a bit, and I just wanted to get it off my chest, and you're the lucky people who are going to hear that. So I just want to talk about guitar snobbery, because it's really doing my head in. Um, now, I'm not one of these people that would say, you know, so don't he hear me on this, I appreciate quality guitars, I appreciate Gibsons and Rickenbackers and Paul Reed Smiths and... Andersons and Sirs and all kinds of, you know, the boutique guitars, etc. I know um, in a lot of cases the materials are better, the fret wire is better and the, you know, things are more reliable. I've got an old Taylor acoustic that's lasted me 20 odd years because it's well made, you know. Um, so, I'm, I, you know, I, I understand all that. So I'm not coming from that point of view of, you know, that like an, an 80 pound or 80 dollar Glary is as good as a Murphy Labs or a Fender custom shop. You know, hear me that, hear me on that. What I'm talking about is this judgy, sneering attitude about people who play Squires or Harley Bentons or, you know, even Glarys or Donner, you know, at the lower end, you know, because the likes of Harley Benton are going kind of up and up. Uh, Jet guitars too are fantastic. I've, you know, I've played a couple of those and I had one for a while. Um, but it's this attitude of, um, you know, the, everything's going to have a, a, a particular brand name on it. We see it in every other area of life as well. You know, I'm talking to you on an iPhone, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I like iPhones. But I like it because it works, not because it's Apple. I like it because it integrates with everything else I've got really easily. Um, you know, and I grew up in the in the world of, like, Windows 95 and, you know, even before that. If I had a ZX Spectrum, that's how old I am. Um, so I, I just like things that work and aren't a faff. Um you know, and I have that attitude towards guitars as well. I mean, I, you know, I love the history behind Gibson and Fender and all that kind of thing. But, you know, at the minute, you know, the guitars I own, and I'll show you them in a second, I own a, a g &L Tribute, which you'll have seen the review of, which was made in Indonesia, which, um, you know, used value 350 quid, tops. Um, I gig with a, an Epiphone J45. And I have my old Taylor, but I don't tend to gig that because it's getting old and it's got sentimental value as well, but I use it occasionally. Um, so that's the most expensive guitar I currently own. I have owned much more expensive guitars in the past, but I'll, t I'll tell you about those in a minute. Um, so that's the most expensive guitar I currently own, but it's, it's, a, it's a 310, so it's not worth a huge amount. Probably, I don't know, £900, something like that. Maybe less now. Um, and I've got a, a Gretsch um, Electromatic 5622T. Uh, which was a, a 50th birthday present. And, uh, you know, that's a great guitar, but, uh, you know, made in China. I think that was £500-ish. And um, I've also got a modded Yamaha a Pacifica 012, uh, which I got for £30 in the charity shop uh, years ago, and I've just stuck some cheap Amazon pickups in it and, you know, some decent pots and that kind of switch. And that plays fantastically. It's really good. Um, it's well built. Um, now, the, I've had expensive guitars. You know, I had an Anderson for years and never really bonded with it. Not because it was a bad guitar. It was a fantastic guitar. Uh, really well made. But, yeah, just it didn't particularly inspire me. And that's my fault, not the guitar's fault. And I've had lots of Gibsons. I've had Les Paul Studios. And, um, you know, I recently had a Gibson that you've seen on this channel. But I had to sell that because I had bills to pay. You know, I had it for, for uh, I think, about four years. And then a bill came up not long after I did that review and I had to go. And I got the G&L instead so I can carry on playing and, and teaching. And it's the nature of being self-employed, especially a self-employed musician, is that you have feast or famine often, you know. And if, if an unexpected bill comes up, sometimes you just have to get rid of things because that's what the guitars are. They're just things. Um, you know, I had a um, Rickenbacker 650, which was a great guitar, you know, years ago and... Uh, for PRS core models and SEs, and, and I've gone through quite a few of them. But what I've discovered over the years is that my favourite guitars are the ones that just inspire me. You know, obviously the Taylor has sentimental value. I made a whole video about that. Um, but it still inspires me. But, you know, for, for a, a good few years, I had a, a, a Harley Benton T52 as my main guitar, my main teaching guitar. Because I could throw it in the car go off to the music school I taught at, and it didn't match if the kids knocked it over or whatever, because it was like a tank, but it played really well. I played everything on it. Um, and that guitar cost just over £100. Uh, the only thing I modded on it was the machine heads, and I think I put brass saddles on it, if I remember right. There's an old video of it somewhere on my channel. You can have a look at that. 
And that ended up going to, I, I ended up giving that to a, a guy who was going off on tour as a, as a lighting engineer. And he just wanted a guitar that he could just play, you know, in the bus or whatever, um, as they're going around Canada. So, you know, that, that, that's probably still going. And that was a great guitar, but it cost next to nothing. You know, and I just, you know, brand names are great. Um, and the whole history behind it is great. But I just don't judge people by what they play. You don't know what their story is. You know, my story recently has been, I've been skint. I've been really broke. And I've got a family to provide for. So when um, there's not enough work around, or there's just a dip or an unexpected bill, you have to sell something. So I don't have any expensive guitars at the minute, you know, compared to what I used to have. Um, and I've got my um, Fender ramp you can see behind me that cost me about 150 quid second hand. And I've used that for years and it sounds fantastic. I don't need an expensive tube amp. Um, you know, that's a hybrid amp. It does have a tube in the in the preamp section, I think. It's, you know, it's lasted, you know, however many years, six, seven years that I've had it. Um, but it's mainly, a, you know, a digital thing. Uh, and I've got my my new X um, modeling um, set up as well, which I use for, uh, you know, a lot of the videos and um, some of the other stuff and for teaching uh, online. But, you know, it's just, I have the gear that I have, you know, the gear that I need. And it doesn't matter to me how much a guitar costs. So, you know, this, um, you know, this that's been reviewed recently, this G&L, I've been playing this constantly. I've modded it with a tusk nut, as you, as you saw in the other video. But the rest of it, I haven't really modded. I've set it up. You know, I've sorted the neck out and the intonation and everything. Um, but that's it. And then, you know, bear with me one second. There's my modded uh, Yamaha. And this. You know, it plays brilliantly. It's got a much thinner neck, it's much shreddier. Um, you know, I've, I've stuck some old uh, spare machine heads I had on it, and these are just the, the cheap um, pickups um, that, I, that I stuck on, and I bought, I think I bought some saddles as well. Um, and you can see from the back, it's still got all the old uh, Yamaha cheapy stuff in the back. But if I plug this in, it's a lot like the G. If I it's, it's a Strat, it sounds a lot like a Strat. Um, so, oh, and there's the. Uh, you've know, seen videos of this as well. The uh, Epiphone that I, that I gig with. Now it's not a, um, a Gibson, obviously, because a Gibson would be, what, th two and a half grand, something like that. This cost, if I remember right, about five, nine, nine, new. You can still kind of get it for that. But this has seen me through a year of gigs in pubs. Um, it saved me taking my tailor out because I don't want that getting knackered. I've had drunk people fall on this. I've had... Um, I've not really had anything spilt on it yet, thankfully, but yeah, it's been knocked about a fair bit. It's been in the back of, you know, in the case, in the back of the car, in and out, um, up dodgy back alleys in Edinburgh, getting into venues and things like that. And um, it's done a brilliant job. And it's an Epiphone, it's not a Gibson, you know? So it's a, a bit bizarre to me that people can get so precious. Now, usually, not working musicians who have this issue. Working musicians tend to use what they have and um, make the most of it because they're okay, they're inspirational, creative things, but they're also tools. They have to do the job. And the mark of a good guitar for me is one that I'm not thinking about while I'm playing it, while I'm performing. And all of those guitars, you know, I've got the Gretsch back there as well, all of those guitars do that, but they're not expensive. You know, so stop judging people. Just play what you need to play, and stop feeling bad if you if you are playing a Harley Benton because they're great guitars. They're as good as anything else. They're made in the, you know some of them are made in the same factories as the, as the Squire Classic Vibes and the higher end Squires that people have no issue with because it's got the proper brand name, but because it's a Harley Benton, it's, oh, it's Harley Benton, dodgy, not dodgy at all. No more dodgy than your iPhone. Or well, actually, that's quite a bad thing to say because they are quite dodgy. But anyway, that's another story. But, um, well, you see what I'm saying anyway. So just play what inspires you and let other people play what inspires them. You know, it goes to the other end of the spectrum as well because, you know, that recent Rhett Shill video where he took his um, Gibson Les Paul, his very expensive Gibson Les Paul, and modded it to vintage specs. Um, and people got upset about that. You know, who cares? 
Just let him do it. It's his guitar. Rory Gallagher uh, modded his 61 Strat. Stevie Ray Vaughan modified his stuff. You know, everybody's done it. Jeff Beck, Eric Claps, and everybody. All these artists modify, you know, these these are guitars or tools or musical instruments. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest because it just annoys me. Um, brand names mean hee-haw these days, unless it's a boutique maker. Um, they're all big corporations anyway. If they if somebody makes a good guitar, like Jet makes a fantastic, um, you know, especially their Strat and Tele type guitars are brilliant. On a par with anything, they'll get you, you can gig with them, they'll last you ages. You know, uh, Squires are like that, even the lower end Squires. You no, know, the guitars are brilliant. And then mod them, if you don't like how it is, just mod it a bit. Put, you know, replace the, uh, the bridge or the pickups or stuff like that. It doesn't matter. But um, stop buying into this. Um, I have to have a certain brand to be a, a musician. It's, it's crap. I see people out in the gigging circuit all the time. And I, you know, I'm not blowing smoke up your bum. This is true. Um, and some are playing Gibsons and some are playing, um, you know, expensive Fenders and stuff like that. And that's great because maybe they've just got that one guitar and that they've just invested everything into, into that. And I, I, I'm fully behind that. But also, let's see, like younger kids and people my age, you know, they're gigging with, with Harley Bentons and with Squires and with Faith Acoustics and, you know, um, Tanglewoods and Yamahas and all this kind of stuff. Those are the bread and butter instruments that, that people are using. Um, and they're they're working for them, you know. I would love to get my hands on a 62 Strat or something like that, but that's never going to happen, realistically, unless, you know, somebody leaves a big bundle of cash at my door, which you can, by the way. Um, so you just have to work with what you've got. So so there you go. So thanks for letting me get that off my chest. Sorry, it's been a bit of a rambling lot of nonsense, but just don't be a guitar snob because it's just really annoying. And uh, encourage people with what they're playing, help people out. If somebody makes a bad purchase choice or they've, built, they've bought something in the, you know, especially on, you know, on social media and they're, they're asking questions like, how do I make this better? And if you know your stuff, just, ha just help them. Don't say, oh, you should have bought this. Just help them. Just say, why are you trying to do this with the trust rod? Or why are you trying? That kind of thing. Just let's all be a community and kind of help each other rather than, than judging. Because you don't know people's stories. You don't know that somebody's, you know, working out you know, 12 hours a day and they've saved up and, you know, a squire is all they can afford because they've got other commitments. But they're, they're passionate about playing and they might be a better player than you. I mean, that's that's what really winds a lot of these guys up when there's people who play a lot better than them who are playing it on cheaper instruments. But anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting down a bit here. Okay, so uh, have a fantastic rest of the day, week, month, whenever you're watching this. Don't be a guitar snob. Uh, play guitar lots. Be encouraged, be inspired and inspire others and stop being so negative. And if you are feeling negative, just make one of these videos because I feel a lot better already.